I am so thrilled to be here. I want to go to a question that I have such a burning desire to ask you because I was reading in your pre-interview and I was like so blown away by your answer and your attitude. You're a very respected mother and you answered what you thought the misconceptions about being a mom are. And I loved your answer. Will you please yeah. enlighten us? Yeah, you know, I, I, for me, at the very least, one of the discoveries that, that I made upon becoming a mother was that th th there's a misconception that if you don't love everything about motherhood, that you don't love your child, which is not true, okay? So first of all, we don't have to act like it's great all the time because sometimes it's really hard. And as a working mother, you know, as, as a feminist, it's important for me to support women to make all the choices that, you know, that they want to make, even those that I wouldn't make myself. But as a working mother, I definitely feel there are so many pressures upon us to feel like we have to do it all. And some people, for example, are born and, get, and having children in their lives gives them a purpose they may not have another purpose that they have found in a way. So it gives them purpose and gives them rooting and grounding. I was not one of those people. I had other dreams and other purpose that I still maintain, even as a mother. So, but, but what happens is you're still only one person. Yep. Okay. So you've got all this passion, all this purpose still inside you. And yet you also have now all of this responsibility. Yes. <laughs> I haven't heard people put it in the terms that you're putting it. I, I find it so refreshing because we all are just so hard on ourselves. The worst. The worst. I would never treat anyone the way I, I treat, treat myself. myself. Never. It's so toxic and weird. I'm like, why never. do I love everyone? And yet m my cup does not run over for yeah. me. Uh, it, very self-critical uh, to a fault. I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. We all are. But the way you speak, it just, it's like <laughs> there are no walls. and boundaries and barriers in what you're saying. It's just a real truth that I related to as a woman. Yeah. Now, here's a transition. Catherine Zeta-Jones is on the show today. There she is, look at her, Roxy wow. Hart, and we had Velma here. I know, that would have been so fun if we could have done like a little hot honey rag together. I, I would have loved I would have loved to have been her Roxy. Come oh on to her Velma. Gosh, would I would have amazing. loved to have seen that. Me now, too. your new album is actually all Broadway songs um, and obviously Broadway, which I think, um, you know, it's funny. You would think Broadway might seem like insider baseball, so industry, so theater, mm. so artsy. I think there's a tremendous amount of the world and businesses um, that are taking a nod from Broadway. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of industries saying, well, when Broadway's lights are back on, yes. that seems like when we'll open our doors yes. because we'll know it's safe for people to congregate in that way. Yes, it is absolutely like a vital sign indicator of Very the, much of the so. health of, of, obviously, the literal health within this pandemic of the city and, and will then be a predicator for the health of the economy as we go forward. For was sure. this album a bridge to being connected to something that was cut off for so many? In some ways. The timing of this, interestingly enough, I, I recorded this album with Alex Lackamore, who is the arranger and, and music director and orchestrator um, for Hamilton, Dear Evan Hansen, Greatest Showman. Oh you know, just my. a few shows. You might have heard of them. Come they're on, those they're are a little all popular. The best shows. Yeah, the best. And we we recorded this album together and we finished recording on March twelfth, twenty twenty. Oh my gosh. The day that Broadway closed officially. And so this record has been on the shelf just waiting like, okay, when will be an opportunity? Like, how do, how do we promote anything anymore? I want people to be able to hear it. It is not lost on me, the, the symbolism of hopefully what this, this record can be for people because we have missed it so much. We have missed the theater. We have missed live entertainment so much. And there's nothing like live entertainment. There is nothing like it. And that's exactly my point. I hear a lot of people when they talk about concerts, it, businesses, true businesses are saying, when Broadway? 
Mm -hmm. We'll follow and Broadway. Broadway. And it's coming, it's coming, you know, like fingers, fingers crossed for sure. And what I hope is that in the meantime, this record can get people excited for what is to come because it definitely for me has been such a heart project in growing up in the theater, always loving this music, always wanting an opportunity to be able to share it um, with my fans and to be able to reinterpret some of these classics in ways that feel like new discoveries for people. Well, it's in your hands and with your extraordinary partner, I think I we're know, all right. in for something so wonderful. It's so fun, because you love theater. I do, I really do. And musicals, who doesn't love music? I mean, you're talking Hamilton and Dear Evan Hansen and The Greatest Showman, I've seen all of them. I have all the soundtracks, yes. I play the music, my kids know the lyrics. So, I mean, what an amazing team. Um, so well, thank you, Jennifer, and may the launch of this album be the beginning of a beautiful transition for all of us. Yes, I would love that so much. And, and let's, let's go to a show together, how about that? It's when a date. Broadway opens up, it's a date. Okay, her new album, Always Like New, will be available this June.